might want to scratch these eerie towns off your travel itinerary. So, who's ready for Ken's Dream Tour? Let's show our new friends where they'll be staying. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie towns with a dark secret. <laughs> Just a little bit. For this list, we'll be discussing the most mysterious towns in film that have more to hide than some bad online reviews. Since we're talking secrets here, spoilers are ahead. Hey, at least we're giving you fair warning. That's more than some of these unfortunate souls got. I see you, bitch! Number 10. Midwich, England, Village of the Damned. All this seems to date from that day two months ago when Midwich was cut off from the rest of the world. After waking from a mysterious bout of unconsciousness that affected the entire village of Midwich, the women of childbearing age are shocked to discover they're all pregnant. That means that every woman in this village who is capable of childbirth is going to have a baby. Later, they all give birth to children with strikingly similar dark eyes and white hair. As they grow, these children are found to be both physically and intellectually advanced, but incapable of empathy or love. People, especially children, aren't measured by their IQ. What's important about them is whether they're good or bad, and these children are bad. Eventually, the town can only watch in terror as their precocious progeny develops the power not only to control events, but also to kill with their minds. Fearing what might happen if the unearthly children were ever to enter the greater world, drastic measures are taken to stop them. That's a dark secret we'd try to keep too. It's almost half past eight. Cool. Only a few seconds more. Cool. Number nine, Covington, Pennsylvania, The Village. On the day before last, I crossed the forbidden line into Covington Woods. Never enter the woods, that is where they wait. That's the second of the three tenets the inhabitants of Covington, a small 19th century village, live by in order to survive. Bushes. The elders warn the town's residents that beyond the woods are both evil creatures as well as wicked neighboring villages that would do them harm. Close the door. One day, when Lucius Hunt is terribly injured, it's decided that the chief elder's blind daughter, Ivy Walker, will go to get the required medicine for him by leaving the isolated town. I am leaving to fetch you medicines. We won't totally spoil it for you here, but what the elders have really been hiding outside the deep woods is a classic M. Night Shyamalan twist. You alone will follow the road and leave Covington Woods. Number eight, East Proctor, England, an American werewolf in London. That's East Proctor, it's all about here at Moors. There's nothing jolly about this English village. The slaughtered lamb, that's kind of strange. When two American backpackers arrive in the isolated town of East Proctor, they're given a less than friendly welcome. It's uh, very cold outside, may we come in? Coming in from the cold of the moors, the travelers attempt to warm themselves at the local pub, The Slaughtered Lamb, where they notice a strange symbol on the wall. Well, look at that star on the wall for! <laughs> Though they're shunned when they ask about it and decide to skedaddle. However, the townspeople soon realize there's a full moon, and fully aware of the dangers lurking on the moors, attempt to find the two Americans. But they arrive too late. Even though we know what's coming thanks to the film's title, this town's werewolf secret reveals itself in a big way. Did you hear that? I heard that. What was it? Could be a lot of things. Number seven, the Ozarks, Winter's Bone. You know your daddy's out on bond, don't you? So what? Centered on 17-year-old Ree Dolly, this story is set in a rural community deep in Ozark mountain country. One that may look like any normal mountain town, but that's hiding many dark secrets. You don't want anything? Some drink, food? I'm hunting for dad. Like I was guessing that. A refreshingly original take on the town with a secret trope, Winter's Bone unflinchingly explores themes of family, poverty, 
drug use, and the illegal drug trade in rural America. I think I forgot about you. What do you mean? Forgot about you and everything happening over here. As Ree works against the clock to unravel the mystery of her father's disappearance, she finds herself increasingly tangled in her town's secret world of illegal methamphetamine production and finds out just how far some people will go to keep the business to themselves, even if it means crossing kith and kin. Never ask for what ought to be offered. Number 6. Antonio Bay, California. The Fog. Are you going to give the benediction tonight, Father? Antonio Bay has a curse on it. While the city's gearing up for its centennial celebration, ghostly events begin to plague the residents of Antonio Bay. Do you feel that? I'll tell you what happens. It just got cold in here. But the town's secret is uncovered when it's discovered that 100 years earlier, the town's founders were involved in a murderous plot. They forced the Elizabeth Dane, a clipper ship loaded with gold, into shallow waters. 100 years ago, on the 21st of April, out in the waters around Spivey Point, a small clipper ship drew toward land. The ship sank, the crew drowned, and the gold was looted. It was then used to build the town and buy the thieves some credibility. But skeletons in the closet, or in this case ghosts, always come out. Now a century later, an unnatural fog descends on Antonio Bay, concealing the vengeful ghosts of the slain sailors as they stalk the murderous founder's descendants. Hey, there's a fog bank out there. Number five, Stepford, Connecticut, the Stepford Wives. Stepford has really done things to you. The old adage, happy wife, happy life, was taken to dark, twisted places in this 1975 classic. You see, Ed hated tennis, but he never said a word. All he wanted to do was to please me. Set in the idyllic town of Stepford, the story follows Joanna and Walter Eberhardt, who've just moved there. The adventurous Joanna soon finds herself bored as all the women of Stepford are unnaturally perfect and obsessed with housework. Confused by this odd and submissive behavior, Joanna and her new friend Bobby investigate other places to live, when Bobby abruptly starts acting like all the others. You are different, your figure's different, your face, what you talk about, all of this is different. Yes, yes, this, it's wonderful. It's not long before Joanna makes a startling discovery about her new home all the Stepford wives have been replaced with obedient robot replicas. Her only option is to escape. But there's yet another surprise in store. It's so awful. If I'm wrong, I'm insane. And if I'm right, it's worse than if I'm wrong. Number four, Springwood, Ohio, a nightmare on Elm Street. I think we should get out of here. The titular street may be more recognizable, but it's the fictitious Midwestern town of Springwood, Ohio that makes this list. There, teens are hunted down and murdered in their dreams by Wes Craven's most iconic creation, Freddy Krueger. Please, God. This is God. <laughs> Not just a random supernatural psycho, Freddy is seeking revenge on the teen's parents for his own untimely death. You see, Kruger was a child predator who avoided jail on a technicality, so the parents of Springwood banded together to kill him. Of course, they didn't realize they'd be unleashing an even more terrifying monster on their kids. Come on, Freddy! It's time to catch you! I'm gonna split you in two! Worse yet, the parents kept secret what they'd done and did not reveal the truth until some of Nancy Thompson's friends were already dead. You want to know who Fred Krueger was? He was a filthy child murderer who killed at least 20 kids in the neighborhood. Kids we all knew. Number three, Sea Haven, Florida, The Truman Show. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Truman Burbank has a great job, friendly neighbors, and a beautiful, loving wife. He's lived on Sea Haven his entire life, but recently things seem off just a little too perfect. You know, I'm thinking about getting out, Marlon. Yeah? Out of what? Out of my job. Out of sea. Off this island, out. In fact, too much of the town's daily life seems to be centered on him specifically, as if he's being watched. 
But it's not just his sunny little town that's watching him. It's the whole world. 220 countries tuned in for his first step. The world stood still for that stolen kiss. Truman slowly begins to discover the cracks in his reality, leading him to question everything about the people he thought he knew and the town he called home. But the closer he gets to the truth, the harder those pulling the strings in the great production of his life fight to keep their star. Was nothing real? You were real. That's what made you so good to watch. Number two, Sanford, Gloucestershire, England. Hot fuzz. What made you choose Sanford then, Sergeant Angel? It wasn't actually my choice. When top London police officer Nicholas Angel is transferred to the sleepy town of Sanford, he thinks he'll be bored to death. Sergeant, I kind of like it here. But you've always wanted to transfer to the country. Everyone, including his new boss, is quaint. And the Neighborhood Watch Alliance, or NWA, does a good job of keeping the town as peaceful as a garden party. But turns out it might not be boredom that kills him. With the Village of the Year award ceremony fast approaching, a string of local murders suddenly keeps Angel busier than ever. I'm arresting you under suspicion of conspiracy to commit murder. <laughs> oh, come, come, Sergeant. You should be ashamed. Calling yourself a community that cares. But what does it all mean? Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg, and Nick Frost would return six years later for another perfect village with a secret flick, The World's End, showing what happens when a night of pub crawling becomes a fight for humanity. I promised myself I wouldn't die in this town. Before we reveal our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Welcome to Potter's Bluff. What's going on Give me the boy. Run! Run! Chief, there's something terribly wrong here in Derry. You know it. Hey, I'm the cop. You're the librarian. It happened everywhere in Gatlin that day. That's when Sarah started drawing these pictures. Number one, Summer Isle, Scotland, The Wicker Man. Will you send a dinghy, please? Combining an isolated location, pagan sacrifice, and ancient rituals performed with unmistakable glee and reverence, Summer Isle has many secrets, and the whole island is in on them. Do the crops for your Summer Isle? Next year, your people will kill you on May Day. After learning about the disappearance of a child on the remote island, Neil Howey sets off to investigate. A devout Christian, he is shocked upon arrival to learn of their pagan ways. But I must remind you, sir, that despite everything you've said, you are the subject of a Christian country. The mystery thickens when, after being questioned, the inhabitants of the island insist that the girl he's looking for never existed. If she existed, we would know. Certain that there's more going on, Howie digs deeper, eventually infiltrating one of their sacred rituals. But because of his meddling, he inadvertently gets himself twisted up in the darkest town secret of all. Oh, God! Oh, Jesus Christ! Do you agree with our list? Which town secret is your favorite? You can't let them go. Should the world know our business? It's murder then. Then murder it is. For more top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.